I know that most of the videos coming out this time of year are Christmas time videos. However, it is not yet Christmas time in my home. I film my videos a couple weeks in advance and so this video is actually taking you through my Thanksgiving week and just preparing, well, you know, kind of dealing with some of the leftovers that we have and preparing food for all of the gatherings that we have to go to. So yes, we made another turkey, meaning I have more bone broth to make and can. If you watched my last, one of my last videos, you saw me walk through this process, but I have yet another turkey, so we're just going to get the big stock pot rolling this morning. Turkeys are a lot bigger than chickens, so I can't just use my instant pot. I really don't think a turkey carcass would fit in an instant pot. So as you saw, I just put everything that was left from my turkey, the skin, the bones, everything that I stuffed it with. So like the onions, uh, lemon, apple, herbs, I put everything in the stock pot, added a little apple cider vinegar, some more dried herbs. You can add some salt if you want. And then I'm going to fill it enough to cover the carcass with water and then just simmer on low for at least 12 hours. So that's going to be going all day today. By the way, today is Thanksgiving Eve, the day that I am filming this. So I'm just going to do some prep. We don't really have anything going on today, which my how times have changed back in my former life, my younger years. Um, I was a bartender and when I wasn't working on Thanksgiving Eve, I was partying on Thanksgiving Eve and now you couldn't pay me to do that. But anyway, we're going to move right along and I'm just going to um, prepare some breadcrumbs. You guys have seen me do this before with my sourdough bread. So this was perfect because I had a loaf that I had overproofed and the texture just wasn't the greatest. I thought, okay, well, I need breadcrumbs. I'll just turn this into breadcrumbs. And, you know, I know that most people do this process the opposite of what I'm doing. So they actually put their bread, like cube up their bread and put it in a food processor and turn it into crumbs before baking it. But I do it after because you can fit the cubes on a cookie sheet and they just seem to toast more evenly than if you have the bread already crumbed before you bake it. So that's just what I'm going with. And I need the breadcrumbs because I'm making macaroni and cheese. Well, it's not really macaroni. It's bow tie mac and cheese. So that's not macaroni. I guess you would call it bow tie cheesy pasta. But we'll just call it mac and cheese. I just like using the bow ties. So when I am thinking about food to bring to holiday gatherings, I really try to keep it simple and make things that will go over well with everyone, just like really popular things that everyone likes, things that kids like. And so I have, you know, a pretty good rotation of dishes that I bring. And while I'm in the kitchen, I need to get some tea going. My prenatal tea, I'll just set it up to, well, it's actually an infusion, so. Just let it brew there at room temperature while I work today. So this Thanksgiving Eve is just, just prep work, which will make my life a lot more peaceful tomorrow on the holiday and with all of the events coming up. So we've got stuff going on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yeah, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we have family gatherings. And you know, I know... People get very passionate about uh, <laughs> not overdoing it on holidays, but I don't know. I kind of like it. I like having stuff to do, getting together with family. When I was a kid, that was just one of my favorite things is all the family gatherings. And we faithfully went to all of them and I loved it. I know it's not always fun for the parents, but I think since we homeschool and we opt out of a lot of the rat race stuff, I'm just not spent and exhausted when holidays and weekends roll around. Uh, whereas I could see if I was 
doing all these other crazy things where, you know, when I got a chance to have a holiday or a weekend, I might just want to relax and not do all the things. And I, I totally get that because it's nice just to have time at home with family, but that's not our situation. <laughs> we um, have pretty peaceful days and weeks regularly. So when holidays come around, I'm just ready to go. And I'm kind of showing you guys my kitchen here. Did you guys know I have a dishwasher? Here it is. It's been used once since we moved in. A little fun fact. What I just showed you before was our silverware drawer and it's really cool. It has like a pull out section underneath where I store all my sharp stuff. And it's kind of it has a lot of resistance. It's hard to open so the kids can't, well, the big kids can get in there, but the little, little kids can't get in there. Anyway, starting out with my bow tie mac and cheese here, just going to boil my pasta and then I will start the cheese sauce. I need to check on my breadcrumbs. So I essentially just make croutons and breadcrumbs the same way. I make them into basically croutons first. Now these I want really toasty. I, I would have pulled them out just then if I was going to bake my mac and cheese, but I'm not gonna bake my mac and cheese um, because I'm making a gigantic batch so that I can divide it up and use it for a few separate um, events that we have over the next few days. And when you bake anything cheesy, it gets really dry. You have to add lots of extra cheese sauce and then it, it just does, it just gets dry when you bake it. So I'm not going to bake this mac and cheese. So long story as to why the sourdough breadcrumbs are going to stay in the oven a little bit longer so they're nice and crisp and toasty. All right, just gonna drain my pasta. Got my little helper sitting here. And yes, I know that many of uh, you do not like to let your children sit on the counters, but um, it is what it is. He really likes being up here. All my kids have loved being right by me in the kitchen. And you know, so if I'm, if I'm within arm's reach, then I will usually let them sit on the counter. So we are gonna keep rolling here with prep. I've got some really big potatoes that I did not grow in my garden because I can never grow potatoes this big. I don't know, they probably spray some kind of crazy stuff on there to get them that size. But that's okay because I'm making twice baked potatoes and I just want them to be very extra and humongous. So I'm just gonna bake them first, obviously. Twice baked potatoes, I gotta do the first baking. Um, when I bake my potatoes, I bake them at 400. I just drizzle them in some olive oil, salt and pepper, that's it. And then I just bake them until they're fork tender. So it depends on the size really, as far as how long you're going to bake them. All right, my breadcrumbs are done, or my, you know, croutons that I'll <laughs> crush up into breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs, they're finished. They're nice and toasty, just how I want them. The potatoes will now go in. When I'm doing a prep day like this, I, try to keep things going so that I don't have an oven preheated that's empty. You know, I just can keep, I, I plan in my head that way things can go in and out of the oven. And I'm, I still only have one working oven. So the oven that you see here is still broken. And I'm telling you, it is the millennial in me. I have not made the phone call yet for the repairman to comment. Why I have anxiety about these small tasks i really don't know okay what i'm doing here is i'm making a roux so it's just butter and flour and that is going to be the base of my cheese sauce this is how i make all my cheese sauces and um this is how i make my mac and cheese all the time i never measure so i have my little mom's recipe book there because i have to write it down for you guys because i i want to put this on my blog so i am writing the recipe down today but essentially it's a one to one to one as far as uh butter flour and milk so one, let's see, one tablespoon of butter to one tablespoon of flour to one cup of milk. That's the ratio that I do. So, you know, for like one single batch, I would do four tablespoons of butter or four tablespoons, which four tablespoons is a quarter cup, quarter cup of flour and then a cup or I'm sorry, a quart of milk. Sorry if that's hard to follow, but the recipe's in the description as always. Anyway, that's how I cook. I just cook in ratios and then that way I can, I don't necessarily have to double or triple 
my recipes, I can just increase by the ratio that I'm using, if that makes sense, so that I can make whatever, whatever serving size that I need to. So I am making this giant batch of mac and cheese. I am going to have to switch everything into a larger Dutch oven. My, um, well, my extra large one it's gonna have to go into because my large one just wasn't enough. Now, while I am prepping all of this food, none of this food that I'm prepping is going to be eaten today. Like I said, this is just prep. That way our holiday is not stressful, but we still have to eat today. So I need to think about supper and I'm just gonna make something that has become a go-to in my house. It is a favorite and it is instant deep dish cast iron pizza, except I'm not using cast iron skillets today, but it's still the same recipe and it's not really a recipe at all. That's what you saw me mixing up over in that bowl over there. <laughs> I just put some water in a bowl with some instant yeast, a little bit of sugar and flour until I have a very almost liquidy, dough. you couldn't even call it a dough really. Like you would not believe this is pizza dough because it is so hydrated. It's almost like a really thick pancake batter. And then I let it rise up until it's doubled, put it in my, pizza pans. You guys will see how I do it. But anyway, back to the cheese sauce here. So I have, let's see, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper. Those are the main seasonings in my cheese sauce. And then the secret one is a little dash of nutmeg, just a little bit, not too much. Anything with a cheese sauce, I think a little dash of nutmeg is, is just, you know, that's just the pizzazz that it needs. So like scalloped potatoes, any casserole, mac and cheese, I always add a little dash of nutmeg. Now I am pouring my cheese sauce, which you saw me add the cheese earlier. I used um, white cheddar. I'm really a big fan of white cheddar. It's my favorite cheese from mac and cheese. So that is what I use, but use your favorite cheese. So I poured my cheese sauce into my macaroni and you saw it almost looked kind of soupy but the pasta will absorb a lot of that sauce so now i'm just using my vitamix to blend up my breadcrumbs yes that's a bunch of candy but that you see behind there and you'll see why that candy is out maybe tomorrow i'll get to that <laughs> there's a reason why it's out all right so this pizza dough that i'm spreading sauce on now see how fluffy it's it's like um my kids call it cloud pizza because it's just so fluffy but anyway, I usually use cast iron and I preheat my cast iron skillets so they're like piping hot. And then I pour this dough, which yes, it's thin enough to pour into the cast iron and use my, I get my hands wet, use my fingers to kind of spread it out and just shape it to the edges. And then spread some pizza sauce over top, add my toppings and bake at 425 for like 20 to 25 minutes and it is so delicious and when you do it that way in a really hot cast iron skillet then the crust is nice and crispy however like i said i only have one working oven and it's my small oven so i don't have enough room to do all of my big cast iron at once and i don't want to be you know baking pizzas back to back i just want to put all this in there at once <laughs> and have it done for supper so i just improvised and used some other um, pans but the crust wasn't as crispy so I probably won't this is the first time I've done this I used cake pans in a jelly roll pan it worked fine it was still good but I really like the crispy crust all right so I added toppings I have let's see I have like a um, bacon and sausage and then I have a meat lovers and then I have what my children call an adult pizza not because it's rated R, but because it has vegetables on it. <laughs> I have one child, my oldest child will eat the adult pizza with us. And since it's the adult pizza, I put um, red pepper flakes on there and just make it kind of spicy too. But anyway, pizzas are going in. And this is actually gonna wrap up my prep day. So I have my bone broth simmering. I really don't feel like canning this tonight and I don't necessarily wanna let it simmer overnight. I'll probably just throw it in the fridge. We'll see. The macaroni and cheese, I got that finished. I will put that in the fridge as well because I'm not going to divide it up into, um, you know, dishes to bring to wherever we're going until tomorrow, but it's prepped. It's ready. The potatoes are baked. 
I'm not going to assemble them today. So I just did a lot of partial prep and I do this all the time. I just think of like, what can I do in advance with, you know, little pockets of time I have to make my life easier and take away stress. I've shared this before, but I just don't like that. I don't like when like self-induced stress, you know, when you're supposed to have an enjoyable day off or holiday, but instead you're frantically running around. Okay. So these are the deep dish instant pizzas that I did. Yes. Use instant yeast in. Um, and it's just like great on nights when <laughs> I didn't have anything prepped because I always have some meat thought out. I always have some produce in the fridge. I always have cheese and tomato sauce, so I can always just put a pizza together. It's just something that we can always count on. So when I use my cast iron, these pizzas just slide right out of the skillets. Um, I did grease my pans, so they came out pretty easily in the cake pans. So, you know, not too bad, but still, the crust would have been like really golden brown and crispy had I used my cast iron. This was still very good though, not going to complain at all. Now we won't eat all this pizza, but because it is like holiday weekend, extended holiday weekend coming up, and I know we'll have some meals in between outings, I just went ahead and made extra pizza that way it's left over in the fridge. So nice, thick, deep dish crust there, as you can see, just delicious. But anyway, we will have leftover pizza for whenever we need it this weekend. That's another thing, like, you know, these extended holiday weekends can get you because you do your food prep for the events you need to go to and, you know, if you're hosting anything, but you forget that you have like little meals in between so you know just a great reason to always cook more than you need and you'll always have leftovers all right I'm refilling my canisters here it is now Thanksgiving morning and we had a change of plans otherwise I probably wouldn't be filming because I wouldn't really be doing too much today we were not supposed to host anything today we were actually supposed to um, go somewhere but some family members are sick and some things got canceled and we're just going to be home today. Um, I think my sister is going to bring the kids over for a little bit and we might have like one family member come join us at home, but we're going to be home. So I figured I would continue on with the baking and prepping and now we have a meal here tonight, so good thing I did start that prepping yesterday because we can eat some of that food tonight, and my husband is going to fry fish, so not your typical Thanksgiving dinner, but you know, it was last minute, and he said that's what sounded good, so that is what we're going with. So I'm going to start my day by baking one of my favorite desserts of all time. Um, I'm going to make... A double batch so we'll have one for tonight and then I will have one for the event we are going to tomorrow tomorrow is Black Friday and after shopping we have a Christmas parade in town that we're going to and I need to bring some food to that so I am making a st. Louis classic we are um, located about an hour outside of st. Louis so we do live in Missouri and this dessert is called gooey butter cake. If you're not from St. Louis or the surrounding areas, maybe you've heard of it, maybe not. But if you have not heard of it, you are in for a treat if you try this out, the recipe. My recipe will be in the description and I make mine all from scratch. So most recipes you find use yellow cake mix to make this. I don't do that. I make it all from scratch. Um, this cake has two layers. So the bottom is more of a cakey layer and the top, I don't even know what to call it, but it's, it's where you get the gooey butter name. It, it's just like buttery, almost icing. It's just delicious. So the bottom layer I'm making now and it's very, very thick, almost like a cakey cookie batter. That's, that's a good way to describe it. So I've got a nine by nine I'm making 
and a 9x13. The 9x13 I'll take with me tomorrow to the party we're going to, and the 9x9 I have special plans with. You saw some candy sitting out on my counter. Let's see, was that yesterday? <laughs> so I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. So I went ahead and put the bottom layer in my greased baking dishes. Now I am preparing the top layer with my store-bought eggs because my new hens that I bought this year are still not laying and I am I'm not happy. I'm not happy with them. They better pick it up. Start uh, pulling their weight. Okay, so see this looks almost like icing. You pour this over the base layer and just spread it out. Oh man, so delicious. All right, so the little nine by nine, I'm going to, I guess, use for tonight for the uh, for the meal, last minute meal we're having tonight, and it is going to have all of our Halloween candy. This has become a tradition. I, you know, we do sometimes go trick or treating. Some years we have like a bonfire and a hayride. This year we did go trick or treating. It was really cold, but the kids wanted to go, so we did it. Now, I let them eat some candy on Halloween night, but then I do cut them off. And what I make them do is get rid of all the, like, gummy, sweet, hard candy stuff and just save the chocolate stuff. And I always make this with the leftover Halloween candy. So anything chocolatey, like Reese's, Butterfinger, Twix, Hershey's, M&M's, anything like that gets cut up and added to the top layer of a gooey butter cake and baked and it is fabulous this is one of my husband's favorite things like he looks forward to this every year so both of these gooey butter cakes are going to go in the oven the bigger one will probably take a few minutes longer they take about 40 minutes at 350 um, you really do not want to over bake a gooey butter cake. You want, you don't want the center to be set when you take it out. You want it to still be jiggly because over time, when you let it set out and cool to room temp, which you want to do before you serve it, it will set up. So while the, while that's baking, I'm going to move on to assembling my twice to baked potatoes. Originally, I was going to bring these to where we were going tonight but we will just have them here and then I will have lots left over, which is not a bad thing. So just scooping out my potatoes here. I always use russet potatoes. In my opinion, they're just the best for this job. So now I need to make my filling. I have all of the potatoes that I scooped out and I'm talking to my sister. She got here with her kids, so she and I are just chatting away as I cook here. I added some butter, some cream cheese, and cream, and going to mix that up really well, and my small candy, gooey, Halloween candy, gooey butter cake is finished, so I'll go ahead and take that out and let that cool. I want that to have plenty of time to cool before we eat tonight. I'll give this big one a few more minutes and get back to my potatoes while I wait on that. Just going to add some salt and pepper to my twice baked potato filling. If any of you have like, you know, your variation of twice baked potatoes, go ahead and share it in the description and we can all see all the goodness floating around out there because I know everyone has a certain way that they like to make them and um, I like getting ideas from other people. All right, so I need to heat up the mac and cheese. The toasted breadcrumbs that I made the other day, went ahead and topped it with those, and I turned my oven down to 200. Because like I said, I don't really want to bake my mac and cheese. I don't want it to dry out. I just want to heat it up. So I set it out at room temp for a while, and then I just stuck it in the oven on very low. You can bake this mac and cheese recipe but just keep an eye on it. <laughs> you don't want it to end up dry. All right, now I'm filling my potatoes and once I get these filled, then I will top them. And we're getting pretty close to meal time here. Now, one thing that is non-negotiable with twice baked potatoes is bacon. 
You have to have bacon, right? Does anyone make twice baked potatoes without bacon? I don't know, maybe some people do, but I use a lot of bacon because we have a lot of bacon. You know, we raise our own pork. Sometimes we process our own depending on the time of year and how busy my husband is. If he's busy, then he takes it somewhere to have it processed. If he's not, then he does it, but anyway. We got a lot of bacon. All right, these are my gooey butter cakes. So you want to top them with a light dusting of powdered sugar as if there wasn't already enough sugar. So I'm just gonna let those cool. You will see when I cut into them what they look like later. They're just fabulous. All right, I cooked my bacon. Now I'm chopping it up into little pieces, little bacon bits, and I'm gonna add most of this, most of it, to my uh, cheese that I grated up kind of stir that together topped top and then top my potatoes and then I will add the rest of the bacon now something very exciting has happened this is my first year growing chives I don't know why I've waited this long because they're from what I understand I, I believe it's a perennial um yeah chives are a perennial but I didn't know that they were frost hardy so we had our first frost a month ago. I think it's been about a month, but several of my herbs are still going strong. And I knew some were frost hardy. I just didn't know chives were. So I was very excited when I went out and I saw that they were still alive and I had some for my twice baked potatoes. So I'm gonna plate up my two items that I contributed to the meal, the mac and cheese, and the potatoes, so very light on carbs, obviously. <laughs> and then we will have our fried fish as well. It was a really good meal. Like I said, just not a typical Thanksgiving meal, but when plans change last minute, it is what it is, you know? You just do what you gotta do. So we're fast forwarding to the next morning. It is now Black Friday morning, and my little guy has found the light switches, so that's very neat. Um, you know, I've been out of this season of toddlerhood and you just kind of forget those little things, but they're very cute and sweet. Now, I just did something very dumb and picked up that heavy stock pot and wasn't very careful and got my dress and my apron soaked in bone broth, but that's okay. So I had to end up um, refrigerating this broth because I wasn't ready to can it the other night and then I just pulled it back out, reheated it, and now I actually have time to can it before I head out for my shopping for the day. So I'm just doing pints this time because I, you know, I'm actually not, I'm a few months out from having the baby. So it'll be here before I know it. It's just flying by this time. And bone broth is something that I consume a lot of in my postpartum period. So, you know, the first 40 days especially. I twice two out of four times I've gotten severe postpartum thyroiditis and I, I I just don't know you know I I've done everything it's very frustrating for me like incredibly frustrating because it doesn't there's no rhyme or reason it was my first and my fourth pregnancy not my second and third it's been very difficult for me to figure out for specialists to figure out and I, at this point all I can do is just pray I'm being proactive, you know, I'm very active and <laughs> I can just pray that it doesn't happen because it's pretty severe. Um, but anyway, so I have to be cautious with my diet postpartum. So yeah, bone broth is on the menu a lot because it's very easy to di digest. So I just loaded up one of my canners, uh, double decked it. So I've got 20 pints in there and then I had some that I'll just put in this gallon jar and put in the fridge and I will just drink that bone broth throughout the week because I love bone broth. Like I said, it's nutritious, it's good for you, easy to digest. Um, so while that's canning, I've we have a parade we're going to tonight and I need to bring some food. So I'm gonna dip into my prepped food that I had and kind of re-plate um, it, so to say, and then I'll be good to go for tonight. So I made so much mac and cheese I knew I would have enough for at least like two to three <laughs> events and I just added some more breadcrumbs on top I'm gonna bring this into town with me 
leave it at my mom's while we go shopping and then before we go to the parade she's got a steam oven and wow it's fabulous i really want a steam oven i just don't know where i'd put it i potentially have a space um, where our microwave is but my husband i don't think he would agree to that like we have the microwave because he says we have to have the microwave so now as soon as i get these out of the canner i'll just leave them on the counter to cool and i am going to leave I need to head out and meet my mom so we can go shopping and I had to change clothes because of my bone broth mishap. <laughs> my dress was soaked and smelled like bone broth. So that was the end of my Black Friday food prep. I didn't have anything else that I needed to do. Now it is Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend and I've got a few things that I need to make because we have another event tonight. So I have some gooey butter cake and this is what it looks like final product. <laughs> I have some left over of both kinds of the candy gooey butter cake and the regular gooey butter cake. So I'm just going to plate this on a pretty dish, make it look very nice and take it along with me today. And hopefully everyone eats it so that I am not tempted to eat too much. It is just fabulous. One of my favorite things. So that's ready to go. That was really easy. And the two other things that I'm making for this evening are also very easy. Right now, I'm making my cheesy cream corn. You guys have seen me make this, except I'm putting it in the crock pot even easier. And instead of shredded cheese, I'm just going to add cream cheese so I can just let it cook and not do anything to it all day. <laughs> because um, I've made it in the crock pot before with shredded cheese and the cheese kind of dried out, dried it out and stuck to the edges then i tried cream cheese that worked really well so now when i make the cheesy cream corn in the crock pot i just do cream cheese and it's as easy as you saw there just pouring frozen corn and heavy cream butter cream cheese salt and pepper into a crock pot turning it on high and letting it go for a few hours i took the rings off of all my jars labeled those and now my eggs are ready to go in the ice bath so I have two dozen eggs here for deviled eggs. And when I make deviled eggs, I make sure to add baking soda to my water, my boiling water. That seems to help them peel easier. And then I boil for about 10 minutes and then let them sit in an ice bath for 10 minutes. And you know, they're pretty much perfect every time. Very easy to peel. Little update, we do have a cat. Well, kind of, she showed up here on the farm over a month ago maybe it's been I don't know a month or two ago but she is so sweet she's so pretty and she's just the best and so we let her come inside sometimes but she mostly likes to just stay outside in the barns which is perfect all right so moving it right along and don't worry yes I washed my hands in between petting the cat and preparing food um, I'm not a germaphobe by any means in fact I'm probably quite the opposite but when I'm working with food I wash my hands a lot. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's from like starting out in food service, you know, waitressing, bartending and all that. Who knows? Okay. So see how easy that egg peeled from my baking soda method and then the boiling for 10, ice bath for 10. It always works for me. So I've got some bacon that I am frying in the background there while I prepare my deviled eggs. These are spicy deviled eggs topped with bacon and they are just the best you see my little guy back there and our cat that does not have a name yet so if you have any good name ideas go ahead and drop them i i asked on instagram already and i got a lot of good ideas but just nothing has stuck yet we just haven't found the name for her yet all right so got all my deviled eggs plated up here and i am just about finished with all of my food work food prep now i'm adding in I added in some homemade mayo and the secret ingredient is spicy mayonnaise, which I didn't make. It's like my favorite brand, uh, Boar's Head. They have an amazing spicy mayo. So I added some of that. This recipe will be in the description too. Cut up my bacon and I'm going to put all of this together and we are going to be out the door. And that is going to be it for this video. You guys got to come along with me and just kind of, you know, spend time in the kitchen along with my workflow as I prepare for a busy weekend 
and try to always stay just like one step ahead so that it is mostly stress-free. Now, if you noticed on my countertop, there were a lot of groceries. That is because on Black Friday, we didn't actually do any gift shopping. My mom and I just went to Costco. We made a Costco run and had a fun day. And I will film putting all of that away and organizing all that and just kind of show you what I got on my Costco run. So that will be on next week's video. And don't worry, yes, we will get to Christmas content, but you know, winter doesn't officially start until December 21st. And um, I'm just going to embrace the upcoming Advent season because Christmas will be here before we know it.